1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. <clears throat> I'm going to begin reading in verse number 5. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Now, here the Apostle Paul, you go back a little bit. In this chapter, you're going to find out that he just finished at the end of chapter number 4, talking about the rapture, how those that had been dead in Christ aren't going to be left in the grave. They're going to come back with Christ. You know, they're going to... Then we'll get to... Don't have time to get into all that. But he just finished talking about the rapture. Okay? Then we get into this chapter. Okay, at the beginning... Verse number one, he says, But of the time and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. They thought the rapture was happening back then. They thought they were living in the last days, which they were, because I can make a good argument. Every day is the last day, unless, you know, by God's grace, it gives us another one. But they believe they're living in the last He says, hey, it's bad. He says, you also know you know, the times and the seasons. What season is it? But right now it's the season to go out and harvest. Right? Some plant, some water, what happened? God gives the increase. Well, don't end there because the fields are wide unto harvest. He needs what? Laborers. Right? That'll go out and labor in the field. God's given an increase, but some guy go out and harvest. And he says, but not only that, he says, the times. Well, what's the time? The time is now. Right? There is no tomorrow. There is no more yesterday. What is it? It's today. It's all that we have. Right? He says it doesn't matter if you you read it and you're 15 years old still in high school or you come back to it and you read it when you're 90. The time's still the same. The time is now. And the season is it's getting real close to winter. Right? Well, verse number 5, he says, Ye are all the children of light. Who's he talking to? Talking to saved people. Written to the church. Right now, Brother Clint just prayed not too long ago. Right? What have we heard a lot about? The new man. Right? Putting off the old man. Well, when God saved you, guess what you became? A child of light. Make no longer in darkness. Okay, now, we go back. Right? Everybody loves amazing grace. Right? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Right, one of those parts of the song, right? I was blind, but now I see. But when you were in darkness, you were blind. That's why you didn't know you were in darkness. Didn't know that you were in depravity. Didn't know that you needed to get out of where you were and get somewhere else. Right? So you were given sight when? When the Holy Ghost convicted you and showed you that you needed to be saved. But sight and light two different things he says ye are children of light well before you got saved your eyes were open he gave you sight to see where you were he gave you sight to see who he was and how marvelous of a savior he'd be to you right? just because you see doesn't mean that you're not in darkness some people know exactly where they're at and they don't want anything to do with Jesus that pity should break your heart. Other people know exactly where God wants them to be, but instead of embracing the light, they instead walk towards darkness. Eyes wide open the entire time, knowing exactly what they're walking into. What do you think the example of the prodigal? The prodigal son knew exactly where he was going, knew exactly what he was going to get himself into. The only thing he didn't know was where he was going to end up. But he knew where he was headed, and he knew that what he was doing wasn't light. It was dark. Right, why do you think he went to a far country to do it? Because he didn't want his father to know about it. He knew that it was embarrassing just to be associated with what he was doing. So he went far away to go find it. Well, it says, but ye are all the children of light. That new creature... Right? It lives in the light. 
I mean, did not Jesus say? But that his sheep know his voice. But that if he be in them, that they'd be in the light. Jesus said he was the light of the world. So we, receiving him, right, if he's the light of the world, what's that mean to, for us? If he puts himself in us, we got light in us. Ye are all children. We were born out of the light. Well, what's the light? He is. Go read the book of Revelation. There's not going to be a sun in New Jerusalem, New Heaven, New Earth. For he is the light of the city. So what he put in you, himself? Well, what is he? He's light. Why do you think that in Matthew chapter number 5, Jesus said, you know, likened unto a man that has a candle and hideth it under a bushel. You have to hide light. You can't put out the light that is in you. Can't blow it out. Can't, you know, drown it out. Can't starve it of oxygen. Why? Because it's not of you. It's of him. You got a light in you. It's what birthed you. And that's why you're a child of light. Okay, but you have to hide it because you can't put it out. In order to go to places that are dark and not have them realize that you're not one of them, what do you got to do? You got to hide the Jesus inside of you. You got to cover it up. Right? You have to deny who you are in order to associate with things that you used to be associated with. Okay, let me put it this way. Right. Don't know if y'all know this. I'm so white, I reflect sunlight. Okay? I'm almost as white as Bella, and that's saying something. Okay? But Bella, now Bella's every now and then uses that fake spray tan stuff, right? Bella ends up tanner than I am. Right? But, right, I'm not walking into the middle of Harlem today, right, and blending in. Okay? Not just because of the way I talk, not just because of the way that, you know, my accent sounds. I mean, you can, I could sound the same, dress the same. Guess what? I'm not blending in. Right? It'd take a whole lot of work to make it to where I don't draw attention. Okay? Well, that's the way that it ought to be when you go out into the world. People should know that's different. Right? People should know, hey, that don't dress like us, don't look like us, don't sound like us. Why? Because you're a child of light. Well, he says, ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. Now, see, some people got light in them. Where do they go? To the darkest parts. Right? I mean, some of the go back into the old coal mining business. Right? If he was going down into the earth... Right, to drill where there is no sun. They can do that during the day. What do they do? They take the light with them. You say, well, they were in a place with no light. Well, it's still daytime. Right, keep that in mind. There are some places that during the day, there's no light there. That there are pits. And anybody remember where the Bible says that he found us in the miry clay? Where's that? That's all the way down at the bottom. You know, you can get into the ocean. You don't have to dive down too far before it starts getting dark. It's still daytime, but the light don't go as dark or as deep as the ocean does. You say, does that mean that our light's not strong? No, God just wanted you to take the light to the darkness. Why? Because that's the way that he chose to do it. He chose for people to reach other people. But he also promised that if you go, you got light in you. Guess what that means? It's not going to be dark when you go. You've got the light. So he goes on to say, but children of the day, he says, we are not of the night nor of darkness. So in verse number six, therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Now here, he uses two words to describe others. Don't sleep. And be sober. What does that mean? Not be drunken. So he says, Ye are children of the light. Ye of the day. Don't be of the night. Don't be of darkness. 
So he says, as a result of you being light and of the day, go out, don't sleep, and be sober. They say, what is daytime? Daytime is when you get things done. What is nighttime? That's when you rest. Right? Nighttime used to be. Nighttime was God's way of saying, hey, you've run out of time to work. Now you got to go back home and you got to rest. Get ready for tomorrow. Right? Nowadays, nighttime is, we've still got 18 hours before I got to get back to work. Let's try and cram as much stuff into it as we can. Right? Oh, the sun went down. Let's turn on all the lights and light everything up like it's daytime. But right? well, keep in mind biblical times. Okay, sun went down, not much happening. Sun went down, nobody's working out in the field. They may have had light and they may have had lanterns and candles, but they weren't good enough so they could hang them up over a field and light the whole field. Right nowadays, even those that do go out into the fields at night, guess what they got? They got real big light bulbs and they light up the whole thing like it's daytime. He's saying, that's unnatural, Brother George. I agree. But, biblical times, what happens at night? Nothing. But let's say it this way. What happens during the night? Nothing good. Nighttime is a time to rest, but yet some are up to mischief. What are we? We are the children of the day. When we go out, everybody sees us go out. And when we come back, everybody sees us come back. Everything we do is in plain sight he says your children of the day make your deeds known unto men why so that they see your good deeds and glorify your father which is in heaven but how else could we be expected that other people know our testimony that we are written epistles known and read of all men unless we go out and we show ourselves during the daytime during night time nobody's reading the billboard Right. During night time, I don't know about you, ever since I had LASIK, don't know what it is, night time, car coming towards me, if it's, a, if it's a car, we're usually good. But if it's an SUV or a truck, even if they've got the beams low and they're not hitting the high beams, when them light bulbs hit my eyes, guess what? The lines on that side of the road disappear. Right. I'm driving off the white line over here and saying, don't go over that for a second. Why is it? I don't know, just seeing things. When you get hit with a bright light during the middle of night, guess what? You lose everything else. Right, why do you think that when you get pulled over, right, the police officer used to take big old spotlight and point it right in your mirror so that it hits you in the eye? All you can see is police officer right here. That's all he wants you to see. He don't want you thinking about nothing else. Just give the nice police officer all the info he requested, and as long as you weren't a complete idiot, you'll get to go home. A bright light in the middle of darkness, it's not going to help people see what's it going to do. It's going to blind them. It's going to make it to where they can't see anything. Anybody? Middle of the night, turn the light on. You was looking right at the light bulb. What do you do? You turn it back off again. Ow, that hurt. Right? And then you're blinking, and what do you see? You still see the light bulb even though it's nighttime. Right, you got to look the other way, turn it back on, let your eyes adjust a little bit. What are you saying, Brother George? We're supposed to go out during the day. Right? At nighttime, you go around trying to make a big fuss. Right? You go out when the world goes. They're not interested in see what you, they're up to their folly, they're up to their mischief. They don't want anything to do with you. What did they do to Stephen? They stoned him. First, they tried to trample him to death. Right? He's in the middle of preaching, read your Bible. It says that they tried to run him down. Guess what? He didn't die. Holy Ghost is all over him. He just kept on preaching. So then, guess what they did? They went out and then they stoned him. Right? What happened? They was in the middle of their mischief. They was in the middle of their folly. And they didn't want anybody telling them exactly what they really were. Right? Now you say, did, did Stephen go out at night time? No. But that's, an that's what's going to happen. People are going to throw you out. They're going to say, hey, don't come back here no more. They don't want anything to do with you. They just want to be in their darkness. So when do we go? We go during the day. 
We still may be going to the darkest parts of town. May still be going places where they don't have much light. But when we show up, it's not like shining a spotlight. What is it? We're taking light to them. It's already daytime. But they say that what's inside of it, it's just shining a little bit brighter in daytime. Right? When they see us going to the dark, the dark don't affect us like it does them. They're drawn to it. We can walk away from it. Why? Because we've crucified the old man. Has no control over us anymore. He says, year of the day. So therefore, right, verse number six, let us not sleep. Those that are up all night, where are they, when do they sleep? During the day. You know who else sleeps during the day? Those people that don't think there's anything to do. Give you this example. This is a new experience in my life. I'm on the after hours phone this week. Oh, joy. But it's more money. So, hey. Uh, somebody calls, guess what? Jordan got to answer. And that's not just, you know, at certain hours. It's not like, oh, hey, from when the office closes until like 11 o'clock. Nope, anytime. Right? It's only for the VIP people. But if they call, I got to answer. So I have Jerry rigged a giant stereo system so that if phone rings, it's going to ring real loud at 4 o'clock in the morning and wake me up. Right? Because of those of you that don't know, Brother Jordan don't sleep. Brother Jordan hibernates. Okay? I am dead to the world until God wakes me back up again. Okay? I've got so many alarms set that, you know, most of you think that's ridiculous. I don't hear all except maybe one of them. Right? I need all of them. Why? You don't know which one you're going to hear? Nope. Depending on the day, I could hear a different one. Okay? We got lots of alarms set. But the point, I got to go in and change the alarm songs on my phone because I get used to them and don't hear them no more. Right? But yesterday, I'm on after hours phone. Well, Saturday, the up until Saturday, after hours was like after 7 o'clock. So I'm sitting there at 3 o'clock yesterday and got up early, went and saw the grandparents, had lunch with them. I got some things done. Sunday school, doing some study. At 3 o'clock rolls around. I'm like, man, I'm a little bit tired. Let's take a nap. Couldn't take a nap. Why? Because if Brother Jordan took a nap and phone rang and Brother Jordan didn't answer it, guess what? Bad things happen. Right? I couldn't sleep during the day. Why? Because there was still something to do. You say, well, you just had to sit around and babysit a phone. Yeah, but that was something to do. But those that sleep during the day are either those that think there's nothing going on or it's because they're up all night. Do you, we are not Spain we, and Mexico. We don't take siestas during the middle of the day, right, while you're at work. When was the last time that one of y'all said, hey, boss, I'm just going to take a nap over here for a while? Right? When was the last time Brother Bob and Sonny had you out doing some work you know, or helping up on the homestead? Right, and you say, you know what, honey, you keep going. I'm gonna go take a nap and be right back. Now, no, Miss Sunny, she'd probably be okay with that. But if you did it all the time, you'd start getting frying pans off the back of the head, right? But you'd say, well, no, of course I don't take a nap on the job. Why? Because it's work time. You're supposed to be there to work. But but what are we? We're children of the day. What's the day for us? That's time to work. That's our prime time. Right? We are children of it. We thrive in the day. We grow in the light. It's our strength. I mean, a little bit of that light, guess what it is? It's your Bible. Lamp to your feet, light into your path. Right? Everything about us is based off of the fact that we are light and of the day now. We're no more children of darkness. So when... Verse number 6 says, Therefore let us not sleep. He's not saying don't go to sleep at night. No, that's natural. That's when you're supposed to. That's when you're supposed to go in, get recharged, so that you can go out and do it again tomorrow. But nighttime is about, not only used to what happened when the, when the sun went down. Right? They'd batten up the hatches. Right? They'd close all the shutters. They'd make the house safe. Why? Because there are bad things out in the night. So what'd they do first? first thing they did was fortify the house or the fort or wherever it was that they was living but then what happened after that then they would fortify themselves 
what they do? They'd eat supper. That's the biggest meal of the day. Right? They'd not only eat what they need to get through. The that's to get them through not only what they're doing around the house that night, but also to get them through the time that they're sleeping so that they wake up in the morning fresh and ready to go. Right? They're taking care of their nutrition. But then what do they do? That's when you go around and, hey, I tore... To, I don't know how I did it, but about two weeks ago, all I, did, I was just walking around the office. Next thing I know, somebody's like, but Jordan, you've got like some white paint or something on the back of your pants. And I'm like, that's weird. It was not white paint. That was inside of Brother Jordan's back pocket. Somehow, I slit a hole in my pants just walking around. Right? It wasn't a tear, like it wasn't this way. It's just vertical. Like I leaned up against something, or I caught something getting out of the car. And guess what? I've just got a hole in my pants. Right? Thankfully, God's given, you know, been good enough to me. I can go out and buy a new pair of Navy pants. Okay? Not a problem. Don't have to worry about it. But see, back in Bible days, you tear a hole. What do you do? You got to mend it. But when do you do that? Nighttime. You don't do that during the daytime. Do that during nighttime. Why? Because it's the time to fortify to repair, to mend. Right? We can go and look at the fishermen that Jesus called as his disciples. Where did he find them? They were mending their nets. They'd already gone out and labored the day's work. They'd gone out and fished. Now, keep in mind, they didn't catch nothing. Right? Jesus told them to launch back out. Peter went in his boat, caught drafts of fish. So much that both ships about sank. That's how much fish they caught. But what were they doing? It was the end of the day. They were where they were supposed to be. They was back on the shoreline. But what are they doing? They're mending their nets. They're taking what God's entrusted them with and they're making sure that it's ready to go for the next day. They're making sure that their equipment will stand the test of tomorrow. Used to, that's what nighttime was for. Everything else goes away. Well, I can't go out and labor in the field anymore. No, but you can make sure that you know, that reaper that you've got, that's a nice sharp edge on it. But right, so that tomorrow, it doesn't make any bad cuts. You can make sure that all your clothing is fit. can make sure that your shoes, don't it, guess what Brother Jordan did last night? Polish his shoes. Why? Right, because they needed it. When did I do that? Did that during nighttime. Why? Right, because that's just always when I've done it. And I didn't want anything to accidentally happen to the shoes while I was walking around the room during the day. Caused me to need to repolish them before I go bed. Right? Guess what I did when I was done with them? Set them right next to the clothes that I was wearing for tomorrow. Get everything ready. That's what nighttime was for. It was for preparation. Right? It was for repair. It's for fortification. That used to be what nighttime was for. Well, what does the world turn nighttime into? A bunch of debauchery and defiling themselves. Used to, you'd sleep during the night. Because you knew nothing good happened during the night. But, I mean, I don't know what I would have gotten into, right? Because we live in suburbs, not city. But, Dad always said, right? Nothing good happens after the street lights come on. Well, some of them in our neighborhood don't come on. Right? They just, every now and then, like one will be like, ah, I don't feel like working today. But then it'll be working the next day. I don't get it. Right? But in my neighborhood, there was nothing to do whether the lights was on or off. Right? But the expression still holds true. You know what happens at night? Things that people don't want you to see. That's why they do it when the light's not on. Even places in today's modern electricity, the places where people are most ashamed, you walk into them, they got just as powerful light bulbs as the rest of them, but they're all dimmed down. Why? Because they don't want you to see what's going on. They want you to have just enough light to not trip over something along the way, to find yourself to your seat, but then they want just little enough light to where you can't see anything that's good. They don't want you to see their face. Why? Because they're ashamed of where they're at. They don't want you to recognize them. Why? Because they wish that they weren't there, but yet they're still there. Even with all the light that we have in today's world, at nighttime, those places that you ought not... When you go to Kroger, plenty of light. 
Why? Because they want you to see the labels and the logos to find the things that you want so that you give them their money. Right? You go to a dance club, guess what? Not a lot of light. You go to a bar, not a lot of light. Right? Well, granny, you go to a movie, there's not a lot of light, and then there's a whole bunch because then it's shined up on the wall. What are you saying, Brother George? Places that you ought not be advertise themselves as, hey, it's okay to come here, nobody will recognize you. Used to, night was the time to rest up. Now you got so much time, you can't fit everything in. Then what happens is then you get back home, and instead of spending the night to fortify yourself, you're just hoping to get enough energy to even wake up and get out of bed the next day. They say, don't sleep during the day. Nighttime's the time for sleep. But he also says, be sober. He's saying, don't work yourself up into a frenzy to where you're not, they're not just talking about alcohol. Although he says those that are drunk can be drunken at night. Right? Well, he says, be sober. Peter said, be sober and be vigilant, for your adversary is a roaring lion, walking about seeing whom he may devour. But what does that word, it means to be clear-minded. It means to have all your faculties. Anybody ever been so stressed on the job one day that you wake up the next day and you, for some odd reason, even though you just got a great night's sleep, you've got the worst headache in the world? Right? It might be sinuses. That's usually my problem. Right? Or it means that my sleep apnea mask came off halfway through the night and I didn't breathe well while I was sleeping. Right? But anybody ever just be so exhausted from the day before that you feel like everything you do, you're just trudging through mud all through the next day? You think you could stand before God and say, Lord, I was sober that day? Sober means you catch all the details. Sober means that nothing goes missed. Sober means that you're completely not only able to do what God wants you to do, but you're able to notice all the things that God wants to show you. That's why the rule is not, you know, hey, if you have a blood alcohol content of 0.08, then you're drunk driving. No, you can get drunk driving without that alcohol content in your bloodstream. You can get driving under the influence, not of alcohol, but of medication. Something that's supposed to make you function better, but it makes you not able to drive a car no more. That's why a lot of them say do not operate heavy machinery until you know how this is going to affect you. Some medicine make you go sleep. Guess what? Don't drive a car with that. But yet there are some people that do. There's a difference between being conscious and being sober. Those people that do go out and they're drunk and they're not, guess what? They wake up the next day. They go to work, but they're not sober even though alcohol not in their system no more. They're dealing with the side effects of what they did yesterday. They're not focused on where they are and what they're doing and trying to pay attention to what the master would have them do. No. They're where they are, but they're still thinking about what they was doing yesterday. Their mind is not on what they're doing. It's on where they were. And because they miss it so much, when they clock out, guess where they're headed back to? Same place they were the night before. Sober is not just clear minded no sober is being present sober is being observant and then eventually vigilant if you're sober you can try your hardest and you can say that you didn't leave anything behind whether it's mentally whether it's emotionally whether it's spiritually if you're not sober you can go to give your all but there's going to be something missing you're not going to be able to get to the bottom of the gas tank you're not going to be able to give it all. Why? Because you weren't prepared the night before to give your all today. You weren't concentrated on what you might have to do. You were just concentrated on getting through the day. What happened? You weren't sober. You weren't vigilant. And as a result, you couldn't do all that you could have done. A sober person right, has enough forethought to understand well, if there's a, I'm trying to think of a good Bible example. 
if your sandal that you have has a frayed piece of leather, a sober individual says, well, when I notice that it's been frayed, we're going to fix it. We're not going to wait for the whole thing to snap. Right when it snaps, we're going to need a new sandal. But let's address it now. Maybe we mend it. Maybe we'll go out and make another one. But the point is we resolve it when we notice the problem. Why? Because if we let it go unresolved, ah, it's still fine. Ah, we've still got tread on them tires. Until when? Until you don't have tread on the tires and you lose all grip. Nothing good ever happens on, well, we'll just patch that up later. But what happens? It becomes a bigger problem and then you need to patch it now. Or you needed to patch it yesterday and now you got to pay the consequences. If I need a new sandal, I'd rather take care of it when I've got a nice warm floor, right, carpet, to walk around on while I'm fixing it, rather than have the sandal go bad while I'm out in the middle of a rocky field or hiking up the side of a mountain. Sober means we get things taken care of when they need to get taken care of. Nowadays, most of our lives is pushing as much from today's schedule as we can to tomorrow's tomorrow's schedule so we don't have to worry about it and we're just trying to get as much done as we possibly we have no thought for tomorrow now granted the Bible says take no thought for tomorrow I'm not worried about what's going to happen tomorrow but if I get through today my thoughts are going to turn to okay Lord if tomorrow comes I need to be ready for it you can't prepare on the day why? Because we don't know not what tomorrow brings forth. Right, you ever have one of them mornings where you get a phone call and all of a sudden all your plans went out the window on all the things you were going to do? Well, if you'd already done them, you'd have been prepared regardless of what came your way. Right, we talked not too long ago about a mature Christian being a Christian that can handle any situation regardless of what comes their way. Why? Because they've dealt it in enough time during the night when everybody else has gone away, when everybody else is looking at, oh, what is there to go do? No, they've spent time in a secret place with God saying, Lord, prepare me, not just for tomorrow, prepare me into what you want me to be. I want to be holy as you are holy. Make me into a spitting image of Christ, spiritually. Right, Lord, mold me. Make, I don't care how painful it is. Put me in the fire so that it makes me harder. Right, I want to be a vessel of honor for you. When does that happen? That happens during the nighttime. What is nighttime? Nighttime is quiet time, which means what? It's personal time. It's private time. For who? Well, for you. Personal thing. You can get done whatever you need to get done whether it's praying, whether it's studying, whether it's mending relationships. People don't like to talk about that one. Right? Whether it's humbling yourself and saying, i got to go to somebody and make something right tonight. Why? Because tomorrow I may not get the chance. Nighttime, it's time to get business done. Not outwardly, inwardly. It's a time of reflection. Well, you can't do that if you're not sober-minded. Anybody ever, by the time you get home, all you want to think about is just, I don't want to think about anything. Put some dumb show on the TV that I'm not even paying attention. I just want to veg out for a while. Right? Anybody ever been there? The truth is, right, you may be wore out, but the question is, why are you wore out? Now, I guess some days you just feel like you got hit by a railroad train. But every now and then I get, feel like I got hit by a semi-truck first and then the railroad train came and got me a second time. But, but on those days, was it just because things were hectic? Or can you get home and realize, Lord, I didn't prepare myself for today like I should have. Maybe that's why. Now I get it. Some days, you're going to have a date. Job couldn't have prepared for the day that Job had. Right, but what was he prepared enough? He was prepared enough to say, 
He purposes regardless of whatever happens. What did he say? God's still God. We're going to worship God. That was settled a long time ago. We ain't in the nighttime, in that personal time with Job and God. He had settled that a long time ago. So even though it may be a day that comes along that you never thought would happen, doesn't change the fact that if you did the preparation the day before, you'll handle it different. Well, why didn't I handle it the best way? That's a good question for the Holy Ghost. Brother Jordan can't tell you. But I can promise you that if you ask you, or if you ask him, he'll tell you. Why? Because he leads and guides you into all truth. He's there as your companion, your comforter. For the sole purpose that, one, God could be in you because you are in Him, and two, to seal your soul that it never sin again, but thirdly, so that you could be the tabernacle of God, right? the inhabited place of God. You know what happens? In God's house, the lights never go out. I mean, go back. Read your Old Testament. Them things that, you know, people bring, bring out during Hanukkah. Right? The menorah. That wasn't just something that happened on Hanukkah back in the day. It was there all the time. Go study your Old Testament. They had backups upon backups upon backups. Why? Because if one of them broke, there had to be light in the house of God. It was the commandment of God that the light never go out at the house of God. That's how the tradition of Hanukkah came about the festival of lights as they called it in the Bible right and that's why they call it that over at the zoo okay the festival of lights that Jesus partook in right so take that one you can have two holidays every year right Jesus celebrated Hanukkah you can too what's the, the tradition of Hanukkah that when the oil ran out God kept the light on because the light was a symbol of what God's presence with God's people so if God's in you guess what that means the light's always on can't put it out why do you think you're a child of light because the God of light's in you which means guess what God's always home light's always on can't put it out even if you wanted to well he goes on to say for they that sleep sleep in the night they that be drunken are drunken in the night. What's he saying? Those that don't want to get anything done, they're going to find a time, they're going to find a place. They're going to be drunken, the, don't be of the night. We don't participate in the night. What do we go? We come back and get ready for the next day. Right? Well, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Again, more preparation. Is my faith in the bank note that I got that said, hey, I got enough money to go buy the house? No. Where's my faith? It's in the hope of salvation. It's in that breastplate of love and righteousness. But where is my faith and my protect the things that I'm trusting in? They're back at the house. They're where God gave them to me. And when I walk out, I take them with me. Right, I can't remember which. I think it might have been Brother Wheeler originally that said, you know, some people, what do they do? They go to church, but they take Jesus off the shelf. Then when they get home from church, what do they do? They put Jesus back on the shelf. Now, they don't take him wherever. According to your Bible, we being children of the day, we take him wherever we go, which is the truth. Right? And I understand that every now and then somebody says something to you just gets right under your skin right finds that perfect wedge right which isn't an accident by the way God knows what you're able to be tempted with and he doesn't let you be tempted above what you're able which means God's allowed it to happen to either strengthen you or to demonstrate your strength to somebody else around you right, but that's a different point somebody say the right thing and what do you do you want to put Jesus on the shelf and tell him what's on your mind right but he says no let us who are of the day be so putting on the breastplate of faith and love for an helmet the hope of salvation 
He says, those that are of the day understand that there are going to be some people that are going to try and knock you into the nighttime. They're going to try and wound you. Keep you out past dark. Why? So that nighttime can have its way with you. He says, but those of us that are of the day, we got enough sense and we got just enough faith to believe what Jesus told us in the Bible that because they hated him, they're going to hate us. That he did not call us to just an uneventful service. But he didn't make us servants that did nothing. No. We serve where? On the front lines. We're supposed to take unto us the whole armor of God. I know the daytime, even though I may not expect a fight, a fight may come during the daytime. Even though I'm not expecting a trap that the devil's laid out for me, I understand that tomorrow I may need to be prepared for one of the snares of the devil. Somebody that's focused on the day realizes that during the night they need to get refreshed. They need to make sure that all the latches, that all the straps, all the connection points on their armor are still in good shape. They need to make sure that the previous day may have been a fight, may have had to trudge through a swamp, may have had to climb up a mountain but they go back and they inspect hey let's make sure that today didn't have an impact on my armor so that tomorrow the armor is just as strong when does all this happen this happens when you take time to do it now I get it the days are running out fields are wide under harvest yes we need to be looking up why because Jesus is coming soon but the Apostle Paul is also saying until that day comes we need to be focused on living in the day as bright as we can. We need to be focused upon when nighttime comes we're focused on what? The next day. I don't care what's happening during nighttime I got more important things to do. I got things that will have eternal ramifications that I can take part in. Not worried about what I can be a part of now. It's fleeting. And I see what it does to the rest of the world. Leaves them off worse than they were before. No, I've got the light. I've got something that's going to strengthen me. I've got something that I can put in me, and it makes me stronger. Not because of who I am, but because of the arm that works in me. What's that? That's the arm of God, because the arm of flesh is going to fail me. But he promised that I'm in his hand, his hand's in the Father's hand. He promised that he'd be ever making intercession for us at the right hand of the Father. He's removed every obstacle that there is to us being able to live the life that God wants us to live. All that he asks us to do is to have enough willpower, enough faith, and enough love to go out and live it. But where does it start with? It starts with understanding. Yes, God forbid something happened to one of us and we don't see tomorrow if the sun goes down today and the Lord don't come back and the sun comes up tomorrow we all going to have to deal with another day whether we want to or whether we don't want to whether we're ready or whether we're not ready the apostle Paul says daytime is when we're supposed to be getting all our stuff done he says that's when we thrive that's when we strive that's when we are at our best now granted, during the daytime, you can have a storm blow up like a couple that we had this past week where it looks like nighttime outside, even though we know it's daytime. We all going to have to deal with days like that. Doesn't mean that it's still not daytime. Doesn't mean that it's still not time to do work just because it's raining, just because it's dark. But we all going to have to deal with another day if the Lord gives it to us. Apostle Paul saying it's better to go into it prepared it's better to go into it with the right mindset. It's better to go into it having done a little bit of prep work the night before. Why? Because our devotion towards the one that called us will result in us being able to do our calling better. You prepare, you're going to do a better job. Now a lot of times it's not because we got hit with something that was harder to deal with than anybody else has ever had to deal with. What is it? We didn't prepare the night before. 
we let things lapse because we thought, oh, well, we'll take care of that later. It's not a big problem. Well, it's not a big problem until it is a big problem. And once it's a big problem, you got to address it then. But so many, ah, it'll work itself out. Show me chapter and verse on that. We're supposed to be prepared, and then all things work for good. And I don't just get to say I'm going to go out and live the way that I want to, and God's going to make it all turn out right. No. we got to live according as thus saith the Lord. We've got to go out and be prepared as thus saith the Lord, and then whatever comes our way, He'll cause it to work to good. But it's not just because we're a child of light. We've got to be invested in the light. We've got to be claiming the day. That this is the day God gave me something to do. And I'm going to go out and do it for Him. And if He gives me another tomorrow, I'm going to do the exact same thing tomorrow. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.